So my name is Katrina Marie for anyone watching uh, if we haven't met on the internet or otherwise and I'm really excited to be with Taylor here today. He's a sex educator and relationship coach from North Carolina and Asheville and you've created some really awesome uh, tools and resources for people including Orgasmic Mastery which is coming out in August so that will already be out by the time people are watching this um, and that's for men that's a course for men right? Yeah, amazing. And then also a semen retention challenge, which I'm super excited to ask you more about that as well. And you basically are about helping people supercharge their sex life and just building powerful, intimate relationships, which thank you for your work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so thanks thanks for that introduction. Uh, and those courses are for anybody who has a cock or a penis. Um, and I generally use the term men, but I want to put up, put that out there too for anybody who doesn't identify like that. Yeah, totally. I love that. Yeah. yeah because people with penises have different things than people with pussies. Totally. Yeah. And it's beyond gender. So if you've got a penis, yeah, check out this work. Cool. That's awesome. Yay. So um, the reason I started this little series interviewing men's coaches is because men ask me all the time. Because, you know, these things that we talk about, sexuality, I, I created a course called Orgasmic Living, and it's mainly for people with pussies. And um, I'm a body sex facilitator, which is just for people with pussies. But the, the things that I talk about, it's totally applicable to men as well. You know, like just being yourself, giving yourself freedom to express yourself. Um, yeah, getting to know yourself. All of these things cross the board. But I don't work with men because I, it just feels... I don't know. It's not for me. So I am. Um, yeah, I've just been reaching out to male coaches that I really respect and, and love the work that you're putting out online so that I can show men like, hey, there's actually male role models out there who are who are there for you. So I'm really grateful for you being here and for just being a role model in the world, because I know how scary that shit is being. Um, being an evolving human being in public is a special level of vulnerability that requires courage. So thanks for being a resource and a person for people to look up to and also just like look to the side and just be like, okay, <laughs> um, what's up? So can you tell us a little bit about how you got into this, Taylor? And I read a little bit about your bio, um, but for anyone who doesn't know you at all, how did you get into this? How did I get into this? Um, man. <laughs> what a question. <laughs> well, you know, sex is great. Uh, I've always been really into that, really interested in sex. And from a young age, I was also really into uh, esoteric stuff, mystical things. Like I would play video games that had a mystical edge to them. You know, I would, uh, I would experiment with meditation. I was really into dreaming and exploring lucid dreaming and like, into yoga and meditation and all that stuff. While at the same time being really into sports and really into sex. And it seemed like both of those worlds were totally separate. Um, and they were, you know, they were for, for a long time. And it was this, it felt like I had two sides of myself, you know, two different parts of myself and they weren't integrated. Long story short, um, Eventually, I came across a book that was that said, "Hey, by the way, you can have spiritual sexual experiences." You know, and <laughs> and my mind was like, "Holy shit! Like, what does that even mean? I've never even heard of that. Like, none of my meditation teachers or yoga teachers have ever said anything about that. Like, they never even talk about sex. You yeah. know, like, sex is never sex is like anti mentioned. You know, like you don't want to talk about that in those contexts. Um, so." Fast forward, fast forward a little bit more. Um, I started studying Tantra and Taoist sexuality. And the first time I really experienced an integration of my sexual sexuality and spirituality was at a David Dita retreat. Oh, uh, amazing. I'm reading his book, Wild Nights, right now. It's so good. Yeah, it's awesome. He guided, um, it was myself and 100 other men from around the world came in for a weekend intensive. And he guided us in this exercise I'm not going to share what it was, but it, I felt, so when I say like a spiritual sexual experience, you know, when you have a spiritual experience, there's this sort of, there could be feelings of connection with everything, feelings of alignment with purpose, feelings of 
um, just a glowing kind of energy. Um, and then, so I had that in combination with feeling actual sexual arousal at the same time. And it like blew me wide open and I just like bawled along with all these other men and then went out and sat in the woods by myself for a few hours and just had to like process that that was actually something real that had happened, you know? Like that went against everything I had learned up until that point. I think it was like 28 or something. Um, wow. um, so then just fast forward a little bit more. A few different relationships that I was in, uh, my girlfriends were like, Taylor, you should really share this stuff because this is awesome. And that like fueled my ego a little bit for sure. Yeah. And also it was like, huh, that's a really cool idea because in my current or in my career, like I was a professional commercial photographer. And I was growing tired of taking pictures for businesses I might or might not believe in, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so this was like, oh, cool. Like I could share this stuff I'm really excited about with other men and actually have an impact, you know, actually create change and help people have better sex lives and better relationships and better life in general. And that's like, ah, that's really, that fires me up, you know, super yeah. excited. Yeah, that's really awesome. What would you say the the top problem that you have dealt with as a man and also um, that maybe your clients deal with just so that people who are listening who are maybe have like never even whispered out loud that they have something that they want to be better at or a problem or whatever what um yeah if you can just like tell us a little bit about what the the issues are that most men are dealing with yeah <laughs> um so the most common thing that I, that I get asked about and that, um, that I talk to men about usually is premature ejaculation and, and overcoming that, you know, or fixing that, moving. Overcoming that. premature ejaculation. <laughs> you said. It's, like, it's a great one-liner, right? And it's, it's real for a lot of people. Like, I didn't include that in my little spiel about where I came from, but I used to struggle with that tremendously, you know? Mm -hmm. and so I had to do a lot of research personally and going to workshops and talking to people to try to figure that out and understand it so I could move beyond that you know in my own life so that's one of the major ones and another one is this um, this piece about owning healthy masculinity and like owning this king energy owning this archetypical powerful yet caring presence that is um, that in my opinion is aligned with the healthy masculine. And so I've had, I've had my own journey with that. And that could show up in a lot of different ways, like fear of asking for what I want, you know, or fear of stepping into what I know that I really want to do. But for whatever reason, I come up with 10 different things uh, that prevent me from doing that. You know, mm -hmm. fear of, of asking for my fantasies or fear of saying no to things. Um, mm. this, this stepping into power and the stepping into sovereignty and out of any codependent type patterns that might be there. Cause that's really linked with that sort of energetic dynamic too. Yeah. Those are, the that. Two that, those are the two that come up for me. Okay. So premature ejaculation, overcoming that and like King energy, figuring yeah. out how to be like a sovereign sexual being. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess one, one other addendum that I would add to that is like, if you're a guy and you're looking out on the internet right now, studying about sexuality and trying to figure out uh, like what to do in your own life, like there's, there are tons of, of women out there, tons of gorgeous women out there who are talking about like all these wild orgasmic things and how to bring, um, how to, how to own your sexuality and how to, I don't know, just be shameless right? And they're not as many men. So thank you for interviewing us. And something that I've run into on this journey too with my past relationship and some other women is this, this with the whole Me Too thing, um, and the, how would I say it? Like, there's, there can be this fear sometimes that men have of, of really owning their desires because it might be perceived as, um, toxic you know or or anything like that so like i can totally relate to that and i feel you and that's a real thing that a lot of us deal with yeah i'm like uh, i can't stop nodding um yeah it's a huge thing this me too movement because as women we have so much space now 
um, to talk about this, you can, I mean, and yay, you know, we, we need oh, that, right? Yeah. Like, yes. But where are the conversations for men and how to navigate that? Because I can just think of, you know, if I put myself in the, in the opposite shoes, like in the shoes of men, that would be really scary having sex with um, women, not like not wanting to um, perpetuate that trauma, but still wanting to be sovereign, still wanting to, I mean, engage that powerful energy of like, I know what I want. You know, it's, I think as well, uh, the conversation around consent, like enthusiastic consent is, is really like, um, kind of a dull blanket because if you ever want to try something new that scares you a little bit, you're not enthusiastic about it. You're like, I'm curious, but also nervous. You know, like our, our sex lives aren't so black and white where it's like, if it's a, not a hell yeah, it's a hell no. It's like, no, sometimes it's like, I'm not really sure, but can we try? And, you know, to be able to go into those spaces with each other with a lot of trust, with a lot of um, sensitivity and empathy, um, I think that's really what's required. And these hard lines that have been drawn in the sand, I think, can really pull us up into our heads and have us analyzing situations to protect ourselves, I think, as men and as women and everything in between. So I would love to hear kind of your, um, maybe just your thoughts on how to navigate that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And just a, a piece to add to that too. Yeah. Like, um, one thing that we get as men and as from, one, one type of programming we get as men from society is this idea that like we should be, we should be on our own path, like stoic, like have everything figured out, not needing support, not needing to ask for things. And like one of the best things you can do. And one of the best things I've done is just connect with other men about this topic. Like talk to other men about this shit because everybody's thinking about it. Everybody's having some sort of process around it, you know, yeah. and we just have this weird program and it's like, no, it can't do it. Can't go there. Um, and if you approach other men with that vulnerability and that ask, like you can almost guarantee other people are going to want to talk about it, you know, but most people are afraid to bring that up. So if you can be the person that brings that up, like, more power to you because everybody really does on some level want to talk about it. Uh, I totally resonate with that. I'm sure the fact that in your bio, you're like, I used to come in 10 seconds when I was 19 and I have overcome that. Like, that gives so many people permission to be like, Oh my God. Yes, me too. Like let's start the conversation. And I don't know how you feel Taylor, but like I love going through my inbox and hearing people's stories of, like what's been going on. I feel so lucky that I get to be part of those conversations. And oh. the only reason that we get to be part of these conversations is we've kind of just like aired our dirty laundry and been like, this is what, like, this is what it's like. And you yeah. want to talk about it. And so I think it's a really beautiful reminder you just shared to build the way to build community is not through excelling um, and growing in private, it's through like, hey, this is where I'm at, being vulnerable, and community will come around you. And it's, I mean, we heal in relationship, and it doesn't need to be in sexual relationship, but creating brotherhood, oh, so oh, rich. Yeah, and which is like, <laughs> just want to share like a little piece of vulnerability for me around this, like to put all this stuff out there. I'm still a commercial photographer, you know? <laughs> I'm hired by Google and Facebook and like these other major companies. And like for me to go out there and, and talk about sex, it's like, Hmm, there's a little edge to that. Like, I wonder if these companies are going to see that someday and then be like, Oh, I don't actually want to work with that guy. Mm. And a practice that I've been doing is when I get into those shoots, um, I try to bring up sex. I try to talk about it in these corporate business environments because nice. they're all humans too, you know, and they all on some level, they get it. They're like, yeah, of course, sex is important to us, um, but it's still this this thing that we shouldn't talk about. Yeah, totally. It's in such a, an essential part of our humanity that we're all pretending doesn't exist. And because we're pretending that it doesn't exist, it really plays out in bizarre forms, especially in more um, conservative environments like corporate stuff, office stuff, 
I mean, our sex, everything is sex. Our sexual energy is at play all of the time. And since we're, we're hiding behind that, so many things get convoluted and, um, yeah, just because we're not talking about them. In terms of like bridging that consent gap or like making sure that you're getting on the same page with somebody that you're about to have a sexual experience with, like Mm -hmm. there's a, there's a conversation that would be really helpful to have. And I recognize that like some people feel like before, some people feel like talking about sex before you have sex can kill the energy. Yeah. And like, for me, that's some like that's some old school, old paradigm stuff. I want to be able to talk to somebody about sex and talk to somebody about like what are the risks here? Like who else might be impacted? Like what are you desiring from this experience? Like what is this experience going to mean from you? And if I can get all that clarity up front, then I'm going to be so much um, more present and more easeful in the sexual experience. And then I'll know that this person is present and easeful in the experience too. And it can let the mind settle. You know, so we can be more embodied together and there's a whole like format to go through that sort of conversation at least that i've learned from a couple of different people cool. i'd love to share um there's like a whole written guide uh that i'd love to share like a link to yes know? please like, uh, that's amazing yeah. i love that and it goes over questions like what is this going to mean to you if we have sex you know uh. like, what are you looking for right now um, are you looking for a relationship? What's your relationship style? Like, are you monogamous? Are you monogamish? Are you polyamorous? Do you have other partners? Is there anybody that would be impacted by this? What's your sexual health status? What would happen if you got pregnant? Um, you get, you know, what type of aftercare are you expecting? Like, do you want me to call you tomorrow? Are you going to expect that I call you tomorrow? And then what happens if I don't? Like, all of that stuff. And so yeah. I've gone through a couple of experiences with that conversation and there are two women in particular um, since I've learned that, that through that conversation, I realized, Ooh, this actually isn't a good idea. Like <laughs> this would be a very bad idea if we did anything sexual at all. Wow. And uh, I could feel the 19 year old part of myself being like, Taylor, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, Oh, why are you, you know? doing that? <laughs> Yeah. And like, I'm really glad I saved myself what I think would have been a horrible headache and a painful scenario for both of us. Oh my God, that is the epitome of King energy to me to be like, okay, let's be logical for a moment and survey the land, the whole scene. Mm-hmm. And is this best for us? Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's huge. And I think that <laughs> I've been talking to a friend about sexual energy and how just from a evolution biological standpoint that when we have sex with someone it's in our best interest to really like them Mm. because if we like them then our our future offspring would have better chances of having two parents so that when we swap sexual energy with someone and we go there with them something happens to us we are going to view them differently than if we didn't yeah um, for a whole bunch of reasons that some are mysterious and some are like, hmm, that's very logical. And I think that's why it's so important to use our, our rational mind and our heart and our gut and our cock or our pussy, the whole sensing system before our sexual energy gets engaged to do exactly what you're saying, to be like, is this actually wise? <laughs> you know? Yeah, so in let it, instead of having our sexual energy control us, mm-hmm. like we can ride that, you know? It's a, it's a flip. Cool. Yeah. Um, who made this, this resource? Is there... You know, I don't really know exactly where it came from. Mm-hmm. I learned a model of this two years ago. I did a month-long Tantra retreat with Shashi Saluna and Eugene Headland out mm-hmm. in Thailand. Um, it was awesome. And this conversation came up there and there was a format of things to go through. I also learned it in ISTA, um, the International School of Temple Arts. I did yeah. two trainings with them in the last year. And wow. so they, have, they have a version of this too. And also from a sex educator named Zahava, uh, who's come through Asheville a few times. I don't remember their last name, but they have, a, they have another version of this conversation that includes the topic of power dynamics. Um, like, is there any power dynamic at play here? Like, am I your boss in, in real, you know, outside of this context or like, are you an authority figure in some way? Uh, and how might that play into things? So 
there's like different versions of this out there and I'm not sure exactly where it came from. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Bottom line for anyone watching, talk about sex before you have sex. Yes. Yeah. It'll make it better. It'll make it way better. (laughs) I know I always think of the analogy of like cooking with someone that if you were to make a meal together, but you, you didn't talk before you made the meal at all and you just were both in the kitchen. Yeah. And then like you still didn't even really have communication. You probably make some weird ass food, you know, that neither of you really liked. Mm-hmm. Like you just kind of have to take what's happening. You want to like plan some stuff, understand what other people like. What's the method? What yeah. do I feel uncomfortable with? You know, it's talking is, I mean, yeah. if everyone just talked more about sex, everyone would have better sex. Totally. Like maybe I really like smoked paprika. <laughs> and maybe this other person doesn't like it but if i just start putting it in like it's not gonna work so well you know it's like maybe i like biting somebody's neck and maybe they would be traumatized if i did that without talking about it you know it's, it's totally like, those with the simple things that actually make a huge impact because if you enter that space of if you accidentally trigger somebody's trauma in a sexual experience that's going to change everything you know yeah. and, you're on a different uh, ride Totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, I would love to ask you a question about anxiety and men's sexuality because I think there's this expectation for men that if if someone wants something from you sexually that you like better be ready to go and that it's that there's this I, I think this misconception that men are just like twenty four seven horny, ready to go all of the time. Yeah. And and then there's this there's issues that men face of you know getting it up I don't even know what you would there's like no normal way to talk about these things that sounds just I guess normal but the female equivalent of that that I've really struggled with is just lack of desire and I feel like the conversation around mental health and anxiety and just like being there with people wherever they're at and like holding space for them how that leaves space for us to actually show up completely erotically and when there's this pressure of not being able to show up in our more you know needy side of being anxious or not feeling safe or whatever it is how that really that pressure that we take on ourselves and don't share with our partners how that literally makes us shrivel up Um, whether it's our erection or male or female, it's like turn on is really hard to access if we're pretending we're okay when we're not okay. Um, So what would you, um, do you've got any tips around that? (laughs) (laughs) Just like covering all the things, Taylor. (laughs) Uh, Tips around that. Well, like A, if you're not feeling desire, sexual desire, you're not feeling sexual desire. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's, important to listen to that you know there's a message in there somewhere that means either you're not interested or you are interested and something is getting in the way of that you know something's stepping on the brake pedal of your sexuality so you're not going into that experience and when i think back on um a couple of the most powerful and beautiful sexual experiences that i've ever had uh a couple of them started off with extreme vulnerability you know, and coming from that place of, hey, I'm actually feeling really shitty right now. And I would I don't want sex at all. Like and I'm I'm angry or I'm scared, you know, and here's what's up. And it's not like I share that stuff with the expectation and hope of getting into sex. It's like I'm just authentically sharing that because like I don't want sex right now. Like yeah. I'm just like that's that's real. And then from that space, once some of that stuff is discharged and brought into the container, if you will, um, and and let uh, it's able to just breathe a little bit, then sexuality can rise from that space of ease, you know? And when that happens, it's really beautiful, super beautiful, because then the heart is open, then your your whole body is open, and like, hopefully most people watching this will have some idea that there's a very big difference between fucking and making love, you know? And the experience of heart open sex is is magical. Um, so I guess advice: talk about it. Try talking about it. You know, use get really simple. And I need to be reminded of this too. Like use I statements. Like I feel 
mad. I feel sad. And it sounds so basic. And it's like, yes, it is. But also, it's super important. Yeah. You know? So yeah. people, like Michael Jordan didn't just like jump into the game without practicing basic dribbling all the time. You know, like there's a reason fundamentals are important. Yes. Oh, I love that. Because I feel like the fundamentals of intimacy are what we really are lacking. And and then people want like our sex tips, you know, like how do I get better head or how do I go down on women better? You know, like we want these cosmopolitan sort of check, check, check how to's when most of it is is really quite rudimentary where it's like, however you're feeling, just share that, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. That first, and I like to think of our sexual energy as being like this current that's always there, and there's things that are on top of it sometimes that don't let us experience that. And it's just like you said, um, I forget the word you used, like not eject, but like re releasing some of that emotion. And then all of a sudden, there's your sexual river. Okay. Right there. All of a sudden, wow, you have an erection again. And you're like, holy shit. I thought it was never going to happen again for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just like, you know, fear, anger, resentment, just whatever's going on with you on top of it. So it's, it's a hard thing sometimes or a challenging thing to say you want it, you're, you plan to be sexy with someone, you want to be sexy. And then you're just met with like deep sadness or anxiety or rage. And then if you don't even know the person that well, it's like, if that, it can feel like the least sexy thing in the world to be like, this is what's coming up for me. But what's on the other side of that is, is intimacy and is deeply sexy. So just yeah. encourage everyone to like be in those awkward, unsexy moments because what's after is pretty sexy. Totally. That reminds me of an experience I had this past winter where um, I was, I was having a sexual interaction with a woman and at the time, I was going through a horrible, shitty breakup experience. <laughs> and, like, this person was, you know, the stereotypical, super attractive, whatever person. And, like, in my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, sex. Like, this is going to be great. And I was going through the motions of kissing and touching and being sexual. While internally, I was just, like, pissed off at my ex-partner. And, like, having this, like, weird uh, combination of, of experiences. And eventually I was like, you know, what? I, I can't do this. Like I have to stop and just share, like, this is where I'm at. Like I'm not having a good experience right now because I'm totally wrapped up in this other thing. And when I did that, I noticed there was all this pressure that I had internally of like, Oh, you can't say that to this person. Like it's not okay to have feelings or it's not okay to be vulnerable or something. Yeah. But like the flip side would have been like a longer annoying disconnective experience for both of us you know so we talked about it and it was great it turns out they had some stuff going on too that i had no idea about and we were able to come to a place of actual connection from there and then have a beautiful experience together wow yes yes i hope that story like reaches all the people it needs to reach because that performative like oh i've already gotten on this ride of sex gotta keep going i think like that's a lot of, that's a lot of people's experience is like okay. once you get on the ride, you're on the ride until it's over. And just, just anyone who's listening, when, when you feel anything other than sexy, just pause and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're allowed to feel it. Okay. I want, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with Taoist sexuality? I'm interested in this because I've also studied a little bit of Taoist sexuality with Mantak Chia and um yeah can you give us like the the what is it and maybe like your favorite part of it <laughs> what is Taoist sexuality wow you know so a like i'm not a Taoist sexual master i don't claim to be a grand teacher of anything like that uh -huh. and i have experienced a lot of benefits in my life from studying Taoist sexuality and for me qigong is a big part of that uh -huh. um, so let's see what would i share a lot of what's becoming really popular in today's world around sexuality and relationship has been part of a conversation that's been happening for hundreds if not thousands of years in a few different traditions and Taoist sexuality is one of those traditions you know 
And I think today we're realizing and research is catching up with a lot of the things that they've been saying for thousands of years. So it's like bringing this ancient wisdom into, uh, into modern living. Um, so one of the, the tenets of Taoist sexuality that means a lot to me is to recognize that we are all, con- I don't want to say we're all connected because that's super cliche, but yeah, like- cliche, there- Cliches for a reason. Yeah, totally. There's energy that is in everything, right? And you can become aware of that and be able to move that in your system and unblock things and you reach more ease and experience actual energetic connection with your partner and experience energetic connection with everything that's around you through, through practices like Qigong or visualization or breath work or even like acupuncture uses the same meridians and internal energetics uh, structure that's used in Qigong and used in Taoist sexuality. With practice, it's, I'm able to actually feel that energy and circulate it through, through loops that I either am making up through my own experience or you know, have been used for thousands of years in, through Taoism. So when yeah. you got that, what did that make possible for you? Like what, mm. how did it go? That's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. The specificity of that is helpful. <laughs> um, I would say that, that first getting it was a journey. And there were different points along that journey where I thought I got it. And I would get little glimpses of it. And I would have some positive experiences. And then I'd fall back into old patterns and old habits. So it was a, a journey of regular practice of practicing these things. And you, you spoke to circulating it through a specific pathway I'm assuming you're uh, referring to what's often known as the microcosmic orbit. Yes. Yeah. So in Taoist sexuality, there is this, this orbit um, that's, that you can visualize or you can see on, a, on images. Some people draw it. Um, it goes basically from your perineum, which is the spot in between your genitals and your anus, up your spine and around through the roof of your mouth, down through your heart and back down. Uh, and there's different points along the way. And... When I started to explore that, it opened up the possibility for me of experiencing energy as a thing. You know, it took it out of this imaginary sort of fantasy land of, of like ooh, sexual energy to an actual like a tangible thing. Like I would spend time visualizing and trying to intentionally move just little parts along that pathway mm-hmm. and start to develop literacy with that. It was almost like learning an entirely new language. You know, and at first it was overwhelming and intimidating and it became easier with time. So like in the, in the sexual experience that helps me be able to um, choose a different direction of my sexual energy versus letting it out via ejaculation. You know, I could choose to bring it up my spine into my head, or I could even choose to bring it up the front into my heart. And I've learned from one of my teachers that it doesn't actually matter which way you go. Mm-hmm. You can use different directions for different intentions. Cool. So a lot of times I find that when I'm having sex, I try to breathe up my front into my heart because mm-hmm. it's, um, I can be a really heady person. So if I try to breathe the energy up my spine to my head, sometimes it creates more headiness and actual disconnection for me in the sexual experience. Yeah. So yeah. I try to go the other way, which is sometimes known as the water channel versus the fire tip. Love it. Yeah, I think when people, the reason I wanted to ask that question is because there's there's so many women that I'm teaching and working with that um, that are tuning into this sexual energy and are like, ah, I feel like men just want to fuck me. Like, where are the men who understand the energy? And, you know, not to create like a gender binary experience but testosterone creates a much different experience of sexual energy um like i think like men have like 10 times as much as women that is like it's like a really loud feeling um that that you know maybe some people would call more primal and so you like once you're on that ride it's really quite loud so i just want to like say to any men it is so worth like doing that that journey that process of feeling the finer elements of your sexuality and feeling the direction of your energy so that you have more articulation and more presence and just like more more control and a handle on your sexual energy 
um, so that you can like um, just go as long as you want because you are running the show. Totally. And it doesn't mean that you have to have super like slow vanilla like energetic spiritual sex right like you can still have that really intense fucking you can still go to those wild animalistic places and like do whatever you know it's just like you have this new system you have a new understanding of how your system works so you can navigate those with more ease and more power and more efficiency really you know (laughs) bringing the word efficiency into sex is kind of weird but there's truth to it you know yeah, totally. And just an awareness. I mean, I think of my experience having like tension orgasms and just feeling the energy like coiling inward. You know, I'm not thinking like, oh, what's my Taoist breath loop that I can do? It's like, no, I just feel the energy going this way and I want it to be the opposite. So then it's just, you know, visualizing, widening, spiraling out, relaxing, loosening. So yeah, I mean, we have these amazing lineages and traditions that have given us kind of templates, have kind of given us the recipes, you know, try and work those recipes, and then you can feel more comfortable in actually understanding your own energy so that you can create whatever needs to be created in the moment based on your situation. Did you see the post I made about, or did you take my sexual survey around ejaculation? I didn't take it. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it when I was looking looking you up earlier this morning. <laughs> yeah, so there's some really good stuff in that. Like, I've gone through and um, color coded and highlighted like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of answers. Um, but one thing that was repeatedly shared by women and men who completed that survey was that thinking about not ejaculating during sex and trying to not ejaculate during sex and being caught up in that process was a huge um, just detractor to the sexual experience, you know? And so for, for y'all watching this, like at first when you're learning this stuff, if you're going on this journey, like it's gonna take some of your mental awareness, um, but just like anything with practice and more practice and more practice, like you're not gonna have to think about it so much anymore. It'll just get on autopilot. Like I don't think consciously about doing any specific steps you know, at this point when I make love, it's just sort of autopilot in my system. Yeah, 100%. It's kind of, I remember when I first started doing yoga, like 13 years ago, and people were saying like, you know, you want to be breathing all throughout the class. I was like, how can I be doing the pose and remembering the breath consistently throughout the whole thing? Mm-hmm. And, you know, just baby steps. And now, I mean, 13 years later, it's like, I don't think of that at all, oh. at all. That's, and that's, I mean, yeah. So for, for people, you, almost everyone probably has at least 10 more years of living. Just start small, you know, <laughs> like just like a little baby step. Just try to tune into your energy. And of course, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to control your ejaculation after practicing that one time. Oh. You're, yeah. And, and know that there's so much more to sex than being able to go as long as you want. Like, I remember I used to think that that was sort of like the Holy Grail or something, you know, mm-hmm. and in many ways it is, it's, it's a doorway to deeper sexual experiences when you're not actively worried about ejaculating all the time. Yeah. And when you cross that threshold, there's so many other things to explore that you can explore before crossing that threshold too. But once you do it, it opens up greater possibilities for all sorts of stuff. Like for example, um, uh, let's see from my survey, what's the exact statistic? Um, there's something, I think like 89% of women have had sex with a man who can go as long as they want at least according to my survey, right? Which is higher than I would have expected. Yeah, really um, high. And maybe that's because my audience, well, I'm not going to speculate as to why that is. But um, <laughs> interestingly, over half of those people who said they've had that experience actually said it was negative. And they had a negative association with that experience because a lot of them said it was, they felt the man was performing or it was like this, this, uh, challenge to see just how long they could go you know or how long they could fuck the person you know or like it was disconnected or it hurt and there was like not any presence yeah. and so like, 
all that other stuff is is so important to bring into the sexual experience and it's not just important but it feels good and it's pleasurable you know? mm. yeah i feel like you know, being able to last as long as you want or being able to turn yourself on or have an orgasm. These are all tools that make playing fun. But if you're not present and playing and co-creating together, fuck all those tools. That's not totally. useful. Yeah. 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 Oh, amazing. That's a good, like, two-liner. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Boom. Well, I feel like that's probably a good place to start wrapping this up, Taylor. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. We, we covered um, basically men talk to other men. That's going to help you infinitely. Talk about sex before you have sex. And start feeling your sexual energy in some way. Any other Coles notes we want to add to that? That, yeah, totally. That your desires are normal and your fantasies are normal and it's okay to ask for what you want. And if you ask for what you want, you are so much more likely to get what you want. Like, for example, um, so I, I just recently went through this period of celibacy. This is like mm -hmm. my last story. I, yes, I was really interested in this. Yeah, my last story for today. Um, and that was awesome. And it wasn't just physical celibacy, it was emotional and energetic celibacy too. So, I, I didn't flirt with anybody. I didn't allow my mind to linger on anybody who I was attracted to, um, even if I wasn't around them. Or if I saw somebody who I was attracted to in the grocery store, I just wouldn't let my presence go there. I would bring it back in and focus on myself. And I intended on doing that for a month, and I did it for longer, uh, and that was awesome. And I last night actually broke my celibacy, or whatever you want to call it. and how it happened was wild and it was an edge for me, but there, there's this, this fantasy that I've wanted to have for a while. And I just like, there's from past relationships or whatever, like I've had shame about asking for it. And so like, there are these two people who I was really excited about in my community. And I just, I sent that, I actually recorded a video message of myself and I sent them this to them and I was like, Hey, I'm really attracted to both of you. I think you're both awesome people. You seem like you're attracted to me and each other. And I'm wondering if you'd like to go on a date, like as three people together to try that, just to see what it would be like. Like, how would that feel to you? And they were both excited about it. And so we did, we went on a date, like a three person date. And it was sexy and fun and super connective and super present the whole time. Wow. And like, that was so affirming for me. Like, oh, holy shit. You mean I can just ask? Like, and obviously, like, not everyone's going to say yes to that. But, like, yeah. had I not pushed through that edge and asked for something, that definitely wouldn't have happened. You know? Oh, that no feels way. like um, when, you're just think, when you were describing the date, I was like, ooh, that feels like smoking a joint, like, on the sidewalk. Like, yeah, I have threesomes, but I'm, like, having a sexy <laughs> date with two people in public. Like, that that kind of gets my bit of like voyeurism, like look at me um, going. I, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's funny, like, like there is that part of it for sure. And there's also like just the real authentic thing of like, that's a fantasy for a lot of people, you know, and it's not going to happen if you're just like hoping something is going to happen someday and you don't like take action and, and remembering that everybody, uh, everybody is their own, individual autonomous sovereign person you know who with feelings and with emotions and their own energy and like in the past i had approached this situation in a way that didn't end in good results because i was more like objectifying like ooh, yeah two women hot you know mm -hmm. and that didn't end well like this was great cool yeah, so yeah. there's a story yeah, ask for what you want and <laughs> be okay with people having their own shit and it having nothing to do with you. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Where can people find you, Taylor? www.taylorjohnson.life is where people can find me. And at the bottom of that page, there are some links to some guides on how to last longer in bed, if that's something that you're interested in, a whole guide to semen retention. And there'll be links to my courses when they come out too amazing thank you so much for the work that you're doing and for sharing this conversation yeah thank you for having me it's awesome to connect with you i really appreciate the work that you do too and, ah, thanks. and yeah, i'm grateful to be connected with you in this way and grateful that all of you have spent time watching this 
Yeah, yeah. And if you have any questions for either of us, you can find us on Instagram. I'll put the links to all of that stuff down there. And yeah, go go explore. And bravo, thank you for being here um, and caring about wanting to be better sexually. Totally. Go explore. Yeah. A big old world out there. Lots of people. Yeah, party time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yay!